Hey guys, this is Heen, and I'm the head of film and music production at Roly. I've compiled a bunch of top tips and tricks for you today around playing the seaboard. I'd also like to show you when, where, and why certain features exist within our ecosystem of hardware and software. So let's dive right in. The first thing you should understand when playing the seaboard is called 5D Touch, five dimensions of touch. It's designed to give you access to effects and modulations at your fingertips. So what are the five dimensions? Number one, strike. It's just like note on velocity. And then you have press. Which is sending aftertouch messages. You have slide, which is up and down motion. You have glide, which is left and right motion. And finally, lift, which is your note off velocity. Tip number two, going through presets quickly in Equator 2. The first thing you need to understand is the blue and orange symbol, like these ones next to each preset. The blue ones means it's MPE compatible. They have all the five dimensions pre-mapped. So if you're using a Seaboard, you click on the blue sounds. And if you have a traditional MIDI controller, you go for the orange sounds. Personally, when I'm going through each sound, if I've never heard it before and I just want to see what it's about, then the trick is to try out each five dimensions as quickly as possible. So this is what I do. I load up a blue sound, like big Oscar saw lead. So what does it do? just checked out a new sound and it sounds pretty cool. Tip number three, understand and make use of the side panel on the seaboard. It gives you direct access over the sound that you're playing in Equator 2. So for example, I have this guitar sound. If I want, I could go to the press fader and turn it completely off. Now I've turned off press. I can do the same for slide and turn it all off. No more slide left. And finally for glide, because it's a guitar sound, I don't want it to be completely fretless, so I don't want full pitch bend. I want to have it slightly quantized and pitch rounded, so I leave the fader around middle. So, when the touch faders, are in expression mode. This is when you can see the three symbols lit up. You're controlling the three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. But if you toggle the power button, so you press it once, it will enter MIDI mode for the faders. And when it's in MIDI mode, it behaves like traditional MIDI faders, CC faders. If you look into dashboard, you can change the CC channels for all the three faders and even the XY pad, which means you can map these faders to control anything within your DAWs. 
Tip number four, don't press too hard when you're playing the seaboard. The way the sensor technology is designed is that you have a minimum activation point and also a maximum pressure point. Once your pressure has gone past the maximum pressure point, it literally won't make any difference to the sound. So you just end up tiring your hands and fingers out. Furthermore, it has the side panel control to adjust the sensitivity of the dimensions. So go to your press fader and just bring it down to around 50%. This means now I only have to press half as hard and I'll reach maximum pressure point. way of creating a vibrato is by hitting a note and then rolling your fingertip left and right on top of that pivot rather than hitting a note and dragging it left and right without much of a pivot motion so like this <laughs> Vibrato is great for solo stringed instruments. However, when I'm working with orchestral sounds or string section samples where it involves multiple layer of strings, for those I would recommend turning down the pitch bend or even turn it off completely. Because if you think about it, as an orchestra, you need it to be as in tune as possible. You don't want it to be out of tune. And also when you do a vibrato on those stacked sounds, it means you're bending all the string samples in exactly the same way, which is just not very realistic. So it's better to just turn it off and enjoy the pressure expression. Tip six, ribbon glissandos. At the top and bottom part of the key waves, there's the flat region. They're fully playable as well. It's just much harder to play in pitch because they are designed for glissandos. How do you do it? I'd normally play, you know, and if I want to bend, choose a note and I drag it to the bottom bottom ribbon or if I'm at the top I drag it to the top ribbon once I'm at my destination I bring it back to the fret so I can feel the note center We're going to cover semitone bends. The first one's called ABA, where you bend from one to another and back to the first original note. And you want to apply that same rolling motion as vibrato. And it's great for a bunch of jazz or blues licks, things like. The second one is a B semitone bend where you bend from one note to another and you don't return. This is 
quite fun because if I start on, say, the E flat, which is on the top of the key waves, I can just slide it down to the E and just follow that kind of sliding down the hill movement. <laughs> So what happens if I want to bend backwards, E to E flat, I will have to go against uphill? No, you don't, because the E flat, it has the groove part at the bottom as well. So I could start on the E and then bend it down to the E flat groove downwards. So like this. <laughs> making use of the hills and valleys on the key waves. This is actually really good for a bunch of licks and ideas as well. Things like... That's it for today's video. I hope you've learned something new. If you have your own tips and tricks, share it with us in the comment section, or just let us know if you want me to cover anything Seabot related for the next one. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.